Hey guys, welcome back. In this video we are doing another statically indeterminate problem and we want to solve for the reaction forces at A and B. So if we do the sum of forces in the x direction, we're going to see that we have um, we have the horizontal reaction at A and we have the horizontal reaction at B. And then we also have to add in uh, 150 kilonewtons and 200. So let's just add these up. We get 350 kilonewtons. Uh, and that all has to equal zero for uh, for static equilibrium. And we see here that we have two unknowns and one equation. So yeah, this thing is definitely statically indeterminate. So the way that we solve this is we're going to remove one of the reactions and sort of a, and we're going to imagine how this member would stretch out or elongate if that reaction wasn't there. So we're going to remove B here, and uh, we call B the redundant reaction. And we can calculate for this total deflection of the whole member here using the formula where we take the sum over all of the parts for the internal force, that's P times the length of the part over the cross-sectional area of the part and the modulus of elasticity of that part. Now any point where one of these variables changes, we consider a different part. So we'll look at here, we have uh, four distinct sections on the original beam. Um, if we if we release this and we take a free body diagram of the furthest uh, most right uh, 100 millimeters, we would see that there would be zero axial force here uh, internally. So this P would be zero and it would set that whole term to zero. Now if we enter, if we draw a free body diagram from the right hand side uh, that crosses past this applied force, we're going to be getting an internal force to, uh, to resist that of 200 kilonewtons. So we'll write that in here. So we have 200 kilonewtons times the length of this section is 100 millimeters. And uh, the, the cross-sectional area of this section is 400 millimeters. And uh, the modulus of elasticity here is 200 gigapascals. And if you remember from previous videos, 200 gigapascals is the same units as kilonewtons per millimeter squared. All right. If we draw a free body diagram now that goes from the right past this, uh, this discontinuity and cross-sectional area, we've entered a new section. So now we have to deal with the, the, the section in here. So we get the internal force is 200 kilonewtons. We get the length in this section is 100 millimeters. And we get the cross-sectional area in this section is now 200 millimeters squared. And the elasticity, our modulus of elasticity is still the same thing. We got 200 kilonewtons per millimeter squared. All right, and then when we cross past, if we draw a free body diagram that now goes past uh, this point load here, we're changing our internal force because the internal uh, axial force will now be 350 kilonewtons if we sectioned it there coming from the right hand side. So we have to do our last final section where we get 350 kilonewtons uh, times the length in this section, also 100 millimeters and the cross-sectional area is still 200 millimeters squared and the uh, the modulus of elasticity here is still the same units 200 kilonewtons per millimeter squared so if we just solve those we get a total displacement here of 1.625 millimeters so that's the displacement that we would get if we released this support that we're calling the redundant support and allowed this thing to fully get uh, get stretched out. Now we know in real life it's not pushing its way into the wall. We're assuming the wall is holding it perfectly in place and it's just going to be exerting a force on the wall giving us the reaction force. So the way that we do this, uh, the method of superposition is we we say that this uh, this original system up here, this original system is equal to the sum of this guy, where we remove the uh, where we remove the redundant support and let it stretch out, and also where we actually apply a reaction force or with that with that support removed. We apply the reaction force here. We'll call it R B, uh, and it's going to give us this exact deflection here that is the same as the uh, as the deflection or the deformation uh, under this first scenario. So we'll call this, uh, let's call it dr. Now we can use the same formula again, knowing this condition here. So we know that the original uh, deflection in the first scenario is equal to, or delta, delta r. Uh, this is equal to 1.625 millimeters. And uh, this is also equal to this same formula, the sum of PL over, uh, PL over AE 
for this for this uh, system down here. So we're going to have in this system we have uh, we'll have a single uh, we'll have a single internal force here which will be equal to RB throughout the whole thing. But we're getting a uh, a different cross-sectional area between the, the two major splits here. So we can write this as um, maybe let's write it over here. We have 1.625 is equal to RB times 200 millimeters and uh, it has a cross-sectional area of 400 millimeters squared and it's got that same el uh, modulus of elasticity of 200 kilonewtons per millimeter squared. Okay, so when we draw the free body diagram to take our virtual cut in this section, we've passed into section two, and we'll have to do this again. So we still see that we have the, the only internal force in this uh, in the system is going to be RB. Uh, the length of this section here is going to be 200 millimeters, uh, but it's the cross-sectional area down here that's changing. So we get 200 millimeters squared and uh, the modulus of elasticity is the same throughout, so 200 gigapascals or kilonewtons per millimeter squared. All right, so we can start simplifying some things. We can cancel out the millimeters here. Uh, we can cancel out millimeters squared with millimeters squared down here at the bottom, and we're going to be left with just kilonewtons. Uh, we can take 200 divided by 200, get rid of that, and get rid of 200 divided by 200. So we're going to be left with uh, 1.65 equals RB over 400 plus RB over 200. So we can rearrange that. So we'll just we'll multiply everything by 400. So we'll get 400 times 1.625. Uh, and this is now, this is going to be actually in units of kilonewtons is going to be equal to, well, 400 times RB over 400 will just be equal to RB, plus 400 times RB over 200 is going to be equal to 2RB. All right, so this is, uh, we can just bring this, we have 400 times 1.625 over 3 is going to be equal to RB, and if we just do that, we're going to find out that RB is going to be equal to 216.66 kilonewtons. And that is going in the direction that we assumed because it's positive. Now what we can also do is we can plug it back into this equation and just have uh, 350 minus 216.66. And we're going to find out that RA is also going to be equal to uh, 133.33 kilonewtons, again going off to the left. So there you go. Uh, we used the method of superposition again here to solve our second statically indeterminate problem.